End of Z Goku. Whenever you see him brought up in any discussion or even see him anywhere, he's just sort of that character. You kind of expect to be able to beat anybody subconsciously. There's got to be something goofy, overpowered about him. And even though I'm a professional, even I sort of get that vibe for really no logical reason. So I decided to actually look into it and why I actually feel this way. And this final Goku is a lot more interesting than we might think, despite only fighting for two chapters out of the entire Dragon Ball manga in a fight he didn't even even get to go all out in. So let's get into it. Son Goku starts his journey off getting banged and bruised by bullets from a handgun to pushing one of the strongest martial artists of all time that can nuke moons, taking down advanced super fighter aliens that can vaporize planets with a wave of their hand after training with many different gods and would-be gods, learning to multiply his powers and learning of his true character along the way. This eventually pits him up against the mightiest fighter in the universe and after learning about his true self, his nature nature and how he was raised, he becomes a fighter of legend, long prophesied, and becomes the strongest warrior in the universe, that we know of at least. Eventually, after training many, many years, he faces off against Majin Buu, who once slaughtered the entire pantheon of the overseers of the universe and threatened to destroy it, and eventually, by combining the powers of everyone he's ever met, destroys this incarnation of evil and saves everyone. But not before making his first genuine wish to have this Majin Buu come back one day and be reborn as a good guy that can fight Goku again. Majin Buu was the only other person who really understood Goku and not even Frieza could really understand this desire to be constantly challenged and seek out all strong adversaries quite yet as we know whenever Frieza heard of a strong guy he actually had an anxiety attack which is sort of the opposite reaction. Being the most powerful fighter around and having nobody who could satisfy him however Majin Buu did it with evil actions and Goku with good actions but both did it purely. This would normally lead us to the end of Z, where Goku faces off against this reincarnation of Majin Buu. However, Dragon Ball Super sort of changes things quite a bit and makes this final showdown a lot more interesting than we initially thought. With Goku becoming the Super Saiyan God, a legend passed down even scarier than a Super Saiyan to face off against the real strongest in the universe, the God of Destruction Beerus, who was allegedly sleeping for many decades, although he was foreshadowed potentially in the Buu saga by Old Kai. A little fun fact, by the way, it was foreshadowed that every culture had their own gods and religions back in the Daizenshu many, many years before Battle of Gods, where Beerus was revealed, was actually released. And even back then, it was stated Saiyans considered Super Saiyans their mythological entities or gods in their minds, sort of like their Zeus's and etc., which may have led to this Super Saiyan god concept. Kind of cool, huh? Anyway, eventually Goku even surpasses that and combines Super Saiyan God with Super Saiyan, making Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan, with him eventually learning to hone Ultra Instinct in the greatest combat tournament in the entire multiverse, a form that gods that have trained many millions of years could never hope to achieve. And as we get further and further through Super, we learn that this instinct and most powerful state is from Goku mastering his own body, and it seems to be implied it will one day even infuse with just his his normal body not needing a transformation to utilize its full abilities. By the time Dragon Ball Super Hero arrives, we are only one year away from the showdown with Majin Buu's reincarnation, so little things that Bulma says in this end of Z time skip chapter like, Goku, I haven't seen you in five years, have clearly been retconned a bit, as well as her age, so before I really get into it here, just remember that this might even be the next arc of Super, and either way will probably be a lot different unless something weird happens beforehand, but even with that in mind, if we assume the basic ideas are the same, we can find some insane things out about Goku here. The first thing starting off this time skip is that Goku hypes up Oob as someone who can face him, which makes him desperately excited. Vegeta thinks someone on Earth being as strong as Goku is actually impossible. You know, you gotta think Gohan Beast and all these guys are here, and this guy must be some type of alien. In El Manga Legendario, we know that by this point, that Goku is actually the strongest in the universe and has done a lot of crazy things. If you take this as a foreshadowing, which this video will be considering, then this would mean Goku has surpassed Broly, Black Frieza, Gohan Beast, Ultra Ego Vegeta, Granola, and even Beerus. As you watch Sun throughout the time skip, you see just how desperate he is for a challenge and a new rival. But when you think about it, why would he need a new rival or be this excited if so many other 
powerful fighters that could challenge him and easily defeat him still existed. This is where we get into speculation territory. Either this will get retconned, or it means the next arc of Super is going to be absolutely nuts for Goku to reach this point, and maybe this Gi means a little bit more than we thought. The first thing to know about Oob, especially in this Super incarnation, is that his powers are obviously greatly amplified and different. Even Good Boo's powers are in the Moro fight, as we learn that they all had a reserve of God Key from the Grand Supreme Kai that they absorbed back in the day, who faced Moro a long, long time ago, and then they tap into this to amplify their Boo abilities even further. This isn't a one-to-one -one example, but just think of how Goku going Super Saiyan God and turning all his key into God Key amps him so exponentially. This new Super Oob has sort of this type of potential, but arguably even more, as we see from Goku's reactions. As we know in El Manga Legendario once again, when Goku and Oob face off, that Oob's latent potential and powers allow him to be equal to Goku and actually give him a hard fight, despite the fact he's only shown in base. If we consider how Super is developing Goku, this makes a lot more sense. Not only did Goku absorb Super Saiyan God into his base form, at least in the anime version, but then there's that Ultra Instinct narrative we're getting into soon. After the fight, we learn that Oob can't use all his powers properly, but clearly is insanely powerful. It gets to the point that Goku Gohan and Krillin are basically crapping themselves just watching Goku fight him, despite them in the previous arc having fought Cell Max and seeing Orange Piccolo, Gohan Beast, and all types of shenanigans. You can obviously argue though that they would just be shocked some random kid just jumped in the ring and started giving Goku the hands though, which is totally fair. Now to gauge just how strong Oob could potentially be, which would apply to Goku, we actually have a way to do this, and in the Moro arc we see at the very end Goku needs energy from all of his friends to go into Ultra Instinct again, with Vegeta and everyone else pooling their energies together to give it to him, which only turns Goku Super Saiyan Blue, and then we see Oob give his energy with the guidance of the Grand Supreme Kai, and it turns Goku into his Ultra Instinct perfected form alongside that new, insane, weird weird Susano power-up thing behind it, showing an even higher level of UI than he did against anybody else so far, Jiren included. You can then make a calculation off of the size of the energy spheres generated to get an idea. If you calculate all the heights of the characters and the energy spheres they gave to Goku, you learn that the Orb Oob launches is actually over 270,000 times larger than all of the Z Fighters put together, including the new super powerful Moro Arc Blue Vegeta and Oob does this hyper casually without even breaking a sweat while barely even knowing how to manifest his energy properly. You can check my math there and maybe you guys come to different conclusions, but that's generally how big it can get to. Even Vegeta cannot believe this kid's power exists at all. This power amps Goku to Ultra Instinct Perfected from pre-training can't use energy Oob. So now you see that it's just not Oob who is impressive for fighting Goku. It's actually Goku who is impressive for facing down Oob in just his base form. And this isn't even to mention that if Goku can still transform on top of his base form and somehow does some Ultra Instinct transformation loop, that he seems to be able to amp himself again even further, not only for 400 times for Super Saiyan 3, as the Super Exciting Guide would have it, but then again for a further 50 times for Super Saiyan Blue, if you think just having Super Saiyan God as strong as Super Saiyan 3 for calculation's sake is fair. This 50 times for Super Saiyan Blue is most displayed clearly in the Super Saiyan God Goku versus Kefla fight and just logic being what it is. Then if you think this peak white-haired form requires over 270,000 times the key of going Super Saiyan Blue, you get some insane numbers of stacking on top of what Goku already was in my How Strong Is Goku video I linked here, since he's basically already surpassing that in base form in just this fight alone. As simple and bare bones as it looks, that's actually what's happening. That would just be his raw inverse power scaling, however. If you want a list of feats this would multiply off of, I seriously recommend in my other videos, the how strong is Goku video the most. Now for speculation time. None of this is what I think will happen in Dragon Ball Super, and I mean that. I really doubt any of this will happen. But hypothetically, just to have fun with this part, one of Dragon Ball Super's biggest narratives, while a bit boring, is don't rely on the gods. So 
Beerus isn't going to help you beat Golden Frieza. You relied on Zeno, so you lost your timeline, etc. And surpassing these gods. With Goku saying fighting Oob, a super powerful fighter, is actually his biggest dream, in the anime at least. It makes you wonder, why wouldn't he say the same for Beerus, or for Grand Priest, or Black Frieza, Broly, and so on, if they just keep this general flow in. There's some evidence for it, such as in Daizenshu 4, after the end of Z, Toriyama says this, and he has asked, out of all your characters, which one is the most cool? And he says, I think it's Goku. The always pure strongest in the universe, Goku is number one after all. We also see again in the Dragon Ball Super History book, which literally features End of Z Goku on the cover. So there is no mistake, he is probably referring to that one. He says this about the Buu Saga and his plans for Goku with it. He was asked, how do you feel as you are drawing the final portions of the series? Remember, final portions. Then, Toriyama replies, So before the Boo story arc began, I said, Once this thing wraps up, I want to end it no matter what. Because I thought there was no way for any stronger guys to pop up, or for Goku to get any stronger than he already was. So my starting point for the Boo arc was, This is the end, so I'm gonna draw whatever I want. So in his mind, after the Boo saga, which is end of Z, there was no way Toriyama could imagine stronger guys popping up, or for Goku to get really any stronger than he was. Since this is referring to end End of Z, which is after the Boo arc, this would mean this is when he reaches a peak level of strength in the author's mind. Now obviously with GT and Super, things are going to be much different, but if Super does go down this route of Goku reaching his peak in this fight, this would mean Goku has at least mastered Ultra Instinct to its utmost, and really probably has surpassed all of his rivals realistically. Now if you go super hardcore and say Goku surpasses Zeno at this point, fat chance, but or something crazy and the multiverse goes down, then you can bring up this hypothetical. And there exists in Dragon Ball many different realms, dimensions, and universes, with some of them being like the subspace that instant transmission in the movies travels through, which you see in the Metal Cooler movie, which is described in the Cho Zenshu, or the updated Dai Zenshu. The Suguru space in GT also resides in this weird subspace, and it is also the subspace that houses the hyperbolic time chamber. This subspace is said to not be attached to any world or time space directly, and is void of the concepts of time and space completely. If we take everyone's statements that Zeno is above anything and can destroy anything, this would obviously include this subspace that even Earthlings and others have discovered. Being void of the concept of space and time is quite interesting, and it means that Zeno and the hypothetical Zeno-level Goku, which I'm not saying will happen, but if he does reach that level one day, can shoot blasts that doesn't even have the concepts that an infinite dimensional being would need to even exist. Although that being said, this is highly speculatory, and it's different to be void of these concepts compared to being stated above them. Goku will probably unlikely surpass Zeno in one year as well, but that is something interesting to say, and with the Dragon Ball multiverse comprising of a dozen macrocosm orbs that contain multiple universes and time space within them that expand infinitely, and these weird non-spatial or temporal spaces and subspaces with other dimensions within them. It of course being crazier if you think things like the afterlife is a higher dimensional space completely and take those Koyama Twitter posts as evidence that the Dragon Ball macrocosm itself is a higher mathematical realm, but I've expressed my concerns with that in other videos. The only other showings of this Goku are of course Dragon Ball GT, which definitely wouldn't use the super narrative, which I think most people are interested in at the moment. If you use GT, it's even almost impossible to argue that Oob surpasses like Kid Buu for the most part. I think that's actually like a hard debate to, to win. So we're just gonna stick with Super here. But End of Z also has a showing of in Neko Majin Z, where we see this Goku go Super Saiyan against Z, and their battle is quickly halted. Z is a fighter shown also in Dragon Ball Heroes and takes part and missions called things like extra dimensional space, which further reinforces this argument that this end of Z Goku might be a weirdly transcendent being. There's a joke that this Z is as strong as Mr. Boo. However, in all in all, it's just a goofy spinoff that won't apply to things like Super's continuity or GT. Unless you're just sort of like a everything is canon kind of guy, which in that case, Super Saiyan Blue Goku versus Jumpman Luffy goes pretty hard in the Dragon Ball Z One Piece 3DS crossover. Anyways, guys, that what what is that hey who let you that's right guys goku is stronger than we all thought
me included. Even in just his canon iteration, the method, Arale. For a long time, we ignored this gag character for a few reasons. For one, Goku wasn't really ever confirmed to be stronger than her at max. Even when he faces her in the anime, it was implied she could sort of handle his power easily and it just multiplies her strength by a hundred times because she feels like it without a sweat. Then when Beerus sort of anti-gags her, you can still imply that Goku just doesn't know what Arale is actually fully capable of and her head plopping off is part of her gag and to make Beerus himself more imposing to Goku. Albeit, Beerus does Hakai, one of Arale's antagonists, Dr. Mashi in his ghost form, which has implications. The reason it matters now is because End of Z Goku or Final Goku, whatever we decide to call him, is objectively stronger than Arale, unlike the debatable Super Goku or Beerus, as Arale in El Manga Legendario is stated numerous times to exist and mentioned multiple times for her meetings with Sun and Penguin Village, the setting to her story, Dr. Slump, actually has a location and takes place in the Dragon Ball world map. In this guide, Final Goku is then considered stronger than anyone, period, and the intention was for him to have peak power by Toriyama and he couldn't get really any stronger. Unless you consider Super or GT to retcon this concept a bit later, as obviously they get stronger in those iterations, and he, in the Super iteration, if it does go over that, he'll probably get stronger as well. Arale is a massively downplayed, almost Bugs Bunny type gag character. She can reach up and pop the sun like a balloon, ping pong people through the solar system, and break the laws of physics, and even her own narrative constantly. If you're looking into a mirror, she can pop out of it like a SpongeBob character. Any drawing, television, reflection, anything is an alternate universe she can appear from and has its own reality, showing a myriad of realities that construct its own multiverse that Arale interacts with. Then she will straight up exit her own story, pick on Toriyama and his editors to change the story's narrative, and even write things into her own story many times, just like Bugs Bunny can do. At one point, she even removes Dr. Mashi from the story, but he survives, which is why Beerus's Hakai is actually so impressive, showing its true existence erasure even beyond being removed from the story. It gets crazier though, as in one scene, we see her talking to the others around her, and she cuts out her own manga page to show it to her friend. This manga page is then showing herself holding the page she just cut out, explaining what she just did, showing she just transcended her own reality and scene with a pair of scissors and potentially loops it. And if you think that the drawing here is supposed to be implying an infinite loop, she just infinitely looped her own reality and infinitely transcended the drawing here and infinitely transcended possible multiple multiverses over and over and over again and then treated it like fiction. If you think that the normal Dragon Ball universe is a fourth dimensional construct, as most infinite time space universes are generally considered, Dragon Ball even aside, she may seriously be barging into those five to six dimensional levels through gags alone. If you think she's doing it infinitely, it may even stretch into some hyperversal conceptual level threats with infinite dimensionality from a pure gag, meaning her scaling may mathematically transcend what most characters can even comprehend. I'd say even being safe, we see Arale completely transcend the Dragon Ball world and can treat it like fiction, possibly on loop, which Final Goku is stated objectively stronger than. In Dragon Ball Heroes, this would loop even further, but that's a discussion for another day. Lastly, Arale may be what Goku finally needed to prove he can run so fast he can speed through time, what many people call immeasurable speed, at least in this canon iteration. If you look at the clips on the screen now, this is what it looks like when characters travel through time. You see these usually reddish orange wormholes with strange door shapes or whatever in a tunnel that can vary in colors. Now watch what happens when Arale has to race a Gachin. Watch her accelerate to the point reality begins to warp around her, but that's when it happens, and she blitzes to the point reality turns into the time travel effect showing she is probably, and being implied to, running to the point she is traveling through space, time, and time itself. Since Goku wouldn't lose to Arale in a fight, not only does it mean Arale can't just cut him out of the manga and beat him, or jump out of the show, but it also means she can't just outrace him through time either. Further proof that this isn't just an implication is Arale many, many times can leap out of her own narrative and the story, can view her entire narrative, and then can jump to any point in time on her narrative she desires consistently. And it's one of the most consistent showings of a character being able to do that, period. Meaning Goku, in this iteration, really might have reached those decent multiversal through possible hyperversal levels of strength with the 
measurable speed, even in just the flat cannon rather concretely, which is really the first time we could have ever said this ever. Most of the time people had to sort of misinterpret the afterlife and its dimensionality and its location, or maybe you'd have to really stretch him fighting hit skipping through time. But with this, it's very concrete, at least by the end of the story when Goku fights Oob, he does in fact finally reach those levels. Maybe that panel of Goku breaking through the manga panel at the very start of the story was foreshadowing after all, eh? Anyway, big shout outs to Super Saiyan Ryu who recently made an Arale video, me and him were talking about this in detail. I do hope that you guys can give that video a bit of support as well as this one and what do you guys think? Isn't it kind of crazy how he actually finally reaches this point? Do you think it maybe it applies to Super Goku? Do you think it applies to GT Goku as well? Do you think it needs to be this weird Toriyama final Goku only? Let me know down below. Other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Until next time.